welcome back to Liz Sews. In today's video, I'm going to be going over how to use dye to make matching bra elastics for your bra. So I've dyed once before and it was kind of a disaster. It was a mess, there was dye everywhere and the bra bled forever. But I did some research and I figured out what I had done wrong. And that was that I was using way too much dye for the amount of fabric. So what I have is two different dyes here and they're both acid dyes. The first brand I have is Jacquard Acid Dye, and I can find this on Amazon and stuff like that, but I purchased this from Dharma Trading. So Dharma Trading Company also has their own brand of acid dyes, and I'm gonna be using both of these. So acid dyes are made for protein fibers, so something like wool or silk or fur, something like that, but they also work really, really well on nylon. So the first time that I had done dyeing, I put way too much dye into my water because I was thinking I wanted a nice, deep, rich color. And what happened is I had a lot of dye left over in my water afterwards, and I was rinsing my bras, bra findings forever. But if you do it correctly, all of the dye gets used up by your fabric. So your water actually is clear by the finish of the dyeing process. And when you rinse it out, there should be very little amount of dye that's still coming out of your products afterwards. And when we're talking about amounts of dyes, most of the times they will tell you how much to use. So the Dharma dyes, I don't know if it says on here, it doesn't say directly on the canister, but they recommend 1.5% weight of goods. So if you take all of your dry things that you want to dye and you weigh them, let's say they weigh 100 grams, you would use 1.5 grams of the dye in order to dye it. That is the maximum amount of dye you should use. I actually found within the pot dyeing, I didn't need as much as the maximum. So it, this says 1.5%, I probably went down to pay probably at 1% of weight of goods used. So you can use as much or little amount of water. The water amount does not matter because all of the dye that you put in there is going to go into the fabric. There's none left over. So it doesn't matter the dilution rate of the water or anything like that. What's really important is you have the right amount of dye for the amount of fabric that you want to color. Each dye is going to be slightly different. I think um, the Jacquard dye, actually I think the Jacquard dye in this particular color recommends 1.5%, but it goes back and forth. So you can use less than 1.5%, but you, I wouldn't go any higher than the recommended levels for the greatest saturation of color. In addition to the dye, we're gonna be using a fixative. And because they are acid dyes, we need an acid, acid fixative. So the most economical way to fix these dyes is going to be citric acid. But I realize that most people don't have that sitting around in your house. You're not a food scientist like I am. What I'm gonna be using instead, just to show you how it works, is just plain old white vinegar. Uh, so again, on this vinegar, on this dye, it'll tell you how much vinegar you need to add. So for this one, it says half a cup of vinegar per pound of fabric. So you need to work that back down, right? So if you're only dyeing 100 grams of fabric, you need to work that down into how much vinegar you need to add. The starting ratio is a half a cup per pound of fabric of vinegar. Now, if you're using citric acid, it's like a tablespoon per pound of fabric. So you can see how you can use a lot less of citric acid than vinegar, but this is probably something that's much more readily available in your house. The next thing you're gonna need is a pot to dye things in. So as I had mentioned previously, you, the amount of water doesn't matter how much water you add, uh, but what you want is enough water so that all of the fabrics and elastics that you're dyeing can move around freely within the pot. I will show you at the end of this video, one of the sets of things that I dyed, I didn't have enough room to move them around freely in the pot and I get a much more modeled appearance. So if you want a big solid block of color, just make sure that, that the pot is big enough that everything can move around in it freely and that you can put enough water in there. Now the utensils that you're using to dye in, so the pot as well as, as whatever you're gonna stir your pot with, need to be for dyeing only. Never, never, never use them for food again. What I recommend doing and what I've done is I've just gone to my local thrift store and purchased a pot for like a dollar or two dollars and that's gonna be my dyeing pot. I never use it for food, it's only gonna be used for dyeing. So the last thing we need is the items we want to dye. So as I had mentioned that the acid dyes work particularly well on nylon. So you want to be looking for nylon based elastics and fabrics. So obviously it's going to have some lycra or spandex content in it to make it stretchy, but you want the main fiber to be nylon and not polyester because this won't dye polyester very well. 
I'm going to be dyeing two different types of elastics today. I have elastics that I purchased from the bra makery, and these were billed as dyeable elastics. I don't know what their fiber content was, but they were billed as dyeable elastics and they did take up dye pretty well. And the other set of elastics I'm going to be dyeing today are from bra builders. Actually, these have been dyed already by bra builders and I am just over dyeing. So that means I am applying color on top of the dye that was already there. So I just wanted to compare those two vendors and what their elastics look like and we will see a comparison of them at the end of the video. So to get set up, you wanna put your pot on the stove with some water. And at that point, I would just wet all of your elastics, make sure that they're thoroughly saturated through with water and then set them to the side. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a long sleeve shirt on as well as gloves and a mask whenever working with the powdered dyes. So these dyes are sort of dangerous. It's not something you wanna be breathing in. So definitely wear personal protective equipment in a mask. Once you dilute this uh, dye into the water, the mask not, might not be as important. You're not likely to get aerosolization of that powdery small pigments, but just as a safety precaution, I wore a mask throughout the entire time I made these items. So I'm gonna switch you guys over to my stove and I'm gonna show you guys the steps involved in dyeing your elastics. So we have the dye. We're also going to need some acid. I'm gonna be using just white vinegar. So I also have a thermometer and that's gonna be useful for just telling where my temperatures are because we wanna sort of maintain a temperature around 180 to 200, so just below boiling. So the pot that I'm using, and you wanna look for something that's enamel or stainless steel. I store it in a separate place so that it doesn't get confused with any of my food. Uh, pots as well. And then I also have a four dyeing only set of tongs here that is stainless steel that I'll be using throughout this. So I'm going to go ahead and get on my personal protective equipment, uh, gloves, mask, and make sure that my sleeves are all buttoned up and stuff like that so that I can weigh out the dye appropriately. And then I'm going to fill this up with some water and wet all of my elastics. Okay, so I've got water in the pot and while I'm waiting for this to come up to temp or before I add my dye into this, I just wanna wet all of my things. Uh, I'm just gonna wet all of my products in this water itself. That way I just don't have to get separate pots, but I'm just making sure that everything is thoroughly wetted and soaked through. This should help getting a more even coating of dye on there. Just a quick dump inside and then take those all out. So there is a slight amount of color on these already. Uh, I just I purchased them in this color and I don't quite like it, so I am going to over dye it. So I know that I'm not terribly certain what the finished product is going to look like, but I'm choosing green dye, and I'm hoping that this, these have sort of like a yellowish tea tint to them, and so I'm hoping that with the green dye, it'll give me sort of like a greeny yellow color. So it's kind of an experiment. So now we have that. Next, I am going to, I have my dye that I have pre-weighed out here. So I'm just going to get a little water from my pot and sort of pre-dissolve this dye just to make it a little bit easier. So I don't have a whole lot of dye in here because I'm not dyeing a lot of things and I went with a lower amount. So once I get it looking like it's, it's pretty, well dissolved, then I'm going to add it to the pot and just rinse this out a couple times. So now that the dye is fully dissolved into water, you don't have to worry as much about aerosolizing the powder and that's fine. So we've got the dye and the water in here and I'm just going to bring up my temperature and I'm going to add in all of the elastics as well. So back into the pot that these elastics go. And then I'm just gonna bring this up to 185 to 200 degrees. Um, and stirring throughout the process, just to sort of make sure that stuff, see already I'm really excited about the color that I'm getting, so this looks good. 
So I'm just gonna keep stirring throughout the process and then using my thermometer to check the temperature. So right now we're at 150. Uh, it shouldn't be too much longer to get this up. So just gonna fast forward you guys through this while I bring this up to temperature. Okay, now that we've gotten this up to temperature, uh, we're gonna may try to maintain that temperature for as long as we can, ideally about 30 minutes. But I'm going to add my acid now, which will help get it to fix to the actual fibers in the product. So I'm gonna push everything to one side, and then I'm going to pour in my acid, trying not to hit the acid directly onto the product. And hopefully we could, should be able to, within that 30 minutes of just a constant simmering and moving around, we should be able to get some dye exhaustion. So that means that the, the water starts going clear as it moves into the fabric itself. So again, just gonna put this on fast forward so that you guys can see as I sit here and stir for the next 30 minutes. So I've added a couple more things to the pot just because I could tell I really wasn't gonna get dye exhaustion. Um, and I love green, so it's okay with me to have more green things around the house. So you'll get to see a bunch of different colors because they started out as different colors before I dyed them. Uh, now that I've done that, I do think that I've gotten almost complete dye exhaustion. The I can see now down to the bottom of the pot and it doesn't look like the water is very lightly tinted it's not dark green anymore the water isn't green anymore so i think i'm going to call it quits it has not been 30 minutes but now that we've got dye exhaustion there's really no point in continuing on any further because there's no more dye to move into the fabrics so now i'm going to bring this over to my utility sink and i'm going to just rinse this really really thoroughly so now i'm in my laundry room at my utility sink um so i'm just going to put this out you can see the water is almost clear So that's what I mean by dye exhaustion, that the water, the water doesn't have any more dye left in it. So it should be more thoroughly affixed to the, the fibers now. I'm going to rinse it just in this little plastic container just because the sink is white. And I'd like to avoid having to bleach it down and clean it if I can. So I just rinse it in this container, but it's not necessary. Okay, so as you can see, I'm, I'm wringing the fabric pretty thoroughly and not much dye is coming out of it, so that's pretty good. It means that we've got a fiction to it. So I'm just going to wring these all out and then set them up to dry, and then once they dry, we can look at all the different color greens that we got. So after rinsing everything out in the sink, I went ahead and threw them into the washing machine just by themselves. Uh, I did this along with a couple other batches, but uh, just threw it into the washing machine with just normal detergent and let it run and then line dried and here's the results So this is what I started with and and actually this if you remember these were an over dye so It was like this sort of Very yellowy soft green when it started um, And when I added the avocado dye, this is how it turned out. I actually really love this color like a whole lot um, I think it's really, really pretty. It's a little bit darker than what I was going for, but I definitely can see myself using it. It's just, I just love this sort of like olivey green. I think it's beautiful, but to each his own. Um, so these are Broad Builders elastics. So they, she had dyed it originally. So it's not surprising that with Broad Builders, because her business is based off of dyeing, that her elastics take to dye really, really well. So you can see I'm getting a really nice, even coloration on here. Uh, no swatches or anything like that. And all of these 
last so elastic channeling elastic um, strap elastic and the hook and eye sort of took the color pretty uniformly or as in that they took like the same color so really really excited with these this stuff I threw into the pot just because it looked like I was not going to get dye exhaustion so I just threw some extra stuff in this was white these are all white when I threw them in so you can see the difference in color of the dyes so these were white when I threw them in and these were the, that like off uh, white sort of yellowy color so it really did make a difference in the green that I got but I do really like this green as well so I got some sheer cup lining again this probably came from bra builders it was just sitting in my stash um, I got some fold over elastic I'm not sure the content of this folder of elastic I just wanted to try it it was just sitting in my stash so this one was not pitched as being for dyeing and then this is some uh, power net I just wanted to see how it take it and again I'm getting nice even coloration throughout I think it looks really really nice I'm very happy with this uh, so this power net I purchased from spandex world and it did say that it was nylon and lycra so I was pretty sure that it would take it anything with nylon is going to take to acid dyeing pretty well the higher the nylon content the better it will work so really thrilled with the results of this so after that success i went ahead and did some more dyeing yesterday and i'll show you what i did that so a couple of weeks ago or months ago i received this lace from beware uh, i absolutely love this color and it's what started me on wanting to dye things uh, it's sort of this like mustardy color and i just didn't know of anywhere that was selling elastics that i thought would coordinate with this so what i ended up getting is the dharma acid dye no this one is a jacquard acid dye and the color was golden ochre and i'm really loving how it looks it's not quite the same but i think it's close enough that I wouldn't ever complain. So this is the power net and I think that looks pretty good with that. So power net, I did some sheer cup lining here. Um, see if I get, a, I get a single layer, I think the color is close enough that you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And then all of the elastics here. So for these elastics, I these are elastics that I purchased from the bra makery and they are sold as being for dyeing or or able to dye uh, so that's why I wanted to try them out so I got 10 yards I think of everything so that I could dye up to 10 bras so I have some strap elastic this one took really well for this batch I used a 1% weight of goods and I think that I would recommend 1% weight of goods for anyone who's wanting to get into dyeing. I think once I, I weighed the green stuff, once it was dry, I think I, what I had ended up with was 1% because I had added all those extra fabrics in. So strap elastic, uh, this is some band elastic. It actually took really well, especially on the fluffy sides. That's the side that you're gonna see the most often. This one's gonna be the side that's against your body. So I don't really care if the rough side didn't take as well or not. Um, the smaller Pico elastic, same deal. And the underwire channeling and hook and eye closure. So I think of these two, I probably would prefer Bra Builders elastic over the Bra Makery one, just because I feel like it's, it took the dye more evenly. I think because both sides are plush, it just looks a lot more consistent, but there's nothing wrong with this Bra Makery dyeable elastic. I just think I like that one a little bit more. And I also prefer the scallop to the sawtooth, but this color I think was gorgeous, nice and rich and deep. And I think it is a perfect complement to this lace and I can't wait to make this bra. And then the last thing that I dyed yesterday. So when I ordered, I ordered those two yellow and green dyes from Dharma Trading Company, and I'll link them down in the description box. Uh, they sent this dye to me on accident instead of my ochre one, and so I they they made it up and they sent me the ochre um, after the fact, but they just told me to keep this dye, so I went ahead and used it. So this is Twilight Gray. Uh, to me, this doesn't look very gray. It looks more like a steely blue in some lights. It has like kind of a purpley tone. So I just tried to dye a bunch of different things just to see what would come out of it. So I got some um, sheer cup lining. This does need to be ironed, of course, but you know, sheer cup lining, uh, 
hook and eye these are again all bra makery elastics so like the bra makery elastics do take dye really really well don't get me wrong uh except for this one this one didn't take very well for this color but here's the underwire channeling uh, and some pico elastic underwire channeling some pico elastic the strap elastic i think the strap takes color really really well but i think that's sort of normal um I think that those look really good. This one Pico I had just turned out really light. So that's the, the plush side. And you can see that it is significantly different than the other ones, which is really bizarre because I, this is the same Pico that I used in the ochre, but for some reason on this color, it just didn't take the dye very well. So those are the elastics. And then I also tried out just some different fabrics to see what would happen. So I have some micro duoplex and I just didn't have enough room in my pot. So all of the fabrics are sort of like crunched up and they didn't, they didn't have room to float around freely. So that's something you need to keep an eye on. But I, I kind of got like this tie dye effect, which I don't hate. Um, it's not, it's definitely not like an even perfect dye job, but I don't, I don't hate this tie dye effect. So just know that if you want a nice, even application of color, definitely go ahead and make sure you have enough room in the pot for everything to move around freely. And this is some just micro, I don't think it's micro lycra. Uh, I, it's, it's spandexy for sure. It said it had a nylon content. Uh, I ordered this off of some company off of eBay. It does have stretch in four directions um, and it took the dye pretty well. It's a little bit paler than everything else, but it's all, you know, in the same tonality. So this is a fun one to try just to, to work out. So those are all of the things. And I did want to show you this one really fast. So this one went into the green dye pot, but this is cotton. And so the acid dyes just don't work well with cotton. They're made for protein fibers. Uh, they work well with nylon, but cotton is not what they're, they're used for. So this cotton, even though everything else in the pot got this really deep, rich green color, the cotton hardly took any color up at all. So do pay attention to your fiber contents when you're picking up elastics and materials for dyeing. So if you found this information useful and had fun, I certainly learned a lot about dyeing and I'm glad to take you guys along with the journey. And I'm definitely, it's something I'm gonna be doing a lot more in the future because I just love seeing all these deep, saturated and rich colors. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.